みなさんこ、こんにちは。アジです。よろしくお願いします。九、九月。九月前。九ヶ月前。いや、九、九月前。ええー。日本語を勉強。始める。します。and so I'm having a lot of trouble with。um。I've, I've, I've done a lot. I've, I've done a, and I've done a lot of studying with this book, Genki, Genki, Genki Ichi. Whoa, so good. And I've learned a lot of different ways to finish sentences because there's multiple ways to finish sentences in Japanese.、Um, and I'm, I'm approaching the end of the year and still don't have them. Quite committed to memory yet. So I figured what I'd do is I'd sit down and I'd, I'd try to explain to myself how to, fin- how to, how to finish these. How- I'd explain to m- I'd instruct myself how to speak these sentences and then make it in a video so that way I could watch it and understand it better. This is not a video that you should watch if you're trying to learn Japanese. Because、um, I could make a lot of mistakes. Because I'm going to say it right now, I am not fluent at all in Japanese. The, the information I am getting is coming from Genki One itself, but in terms of if it's 100% accurate, only time will tell.、Um, so let's just. Yeah, I don't have any other way to transition to this. Let's just start the video. <laughs> Okay, first lesson. This one's gonna be really, really easy. We got this or this. This is this. Say it with me now. It's comprised of two hiragana. We got de and su. So, if you were to read it literally, you'd say desu. Don't say desu though, because、um, that's, a, that's a feminine sound, unless you want to. I don't care. Desu is the end of a sentence, right? It's much like a period, but it's, it's very polite. And des is the ending of a sentence, but it also means be, is, or that, kind of. So, like, kore wa enkitsu des. This is a pencil. Boku wa Aji des. I am AJ. Right? Okay. That's easy. This is easy. Everybody knows des. Okay, so now let's say you want to ask a question, right? Okay.、Um, how do you go about doing that? Bada boom. Here we go. Introducing des ka. All right, now what is. What is Now, now, you may be saying to yourself, hey, AJ, this is just des with a ka at the end. That, oh, by the way, that, that's ka right there.、Um, so, what, what on earth is this ka here? Why do you need to put the ka here? You already have question mark. So, why do you need the ka there? Well, ka at the ending of a sentence is an indication of a question. In, in polite Japanese speech. So, so, for example, you could say, Eki wa doko desu ka? Eki wa doko desu ka? And that would mean, so Eki is train station, doko is where, des is b, ka, ka, question. Eki wa doko, eki wa doko desu ka? Where is the train station? This is like very, very basic Japanese that you learn like right when you're starting or something. Okay, next, next, next sentence thing. Okay, so we know des, we know b. So now, how do we say there is or present something? To our friends, we have arimas. Arimas, that's it. That's how you that's how you present things to people.、Uh, if I wanted to say, um, sore wa yo yo wa 
ヨヨ。おう、ヨヨ。ヨヨはあります。That, there's a ヨヨ。Over there, look at, see that? There's a ヨヨ。This is a ヨヨ。Presenting the ヨヨ。あります。Right? When you have the negative connotation, you say ありません。Which basically, this sen here on the back there, it replaces the すぅ up here. And that sen Right there, that's a negative. And you'll see that a lot with other sentence endings. Sen, there's. Dewa、uh, ikemasen. Don't do that. We'll, we'll, we'll cover that later in a later clip. So, yeah, that's, that's arimas and arimasen. There is and there isn't. Oh, だがちょっと待って Because you can't just say, you can't just use arimas and arimasen for every old thing. Because arimas and arimasen are only for things that, for non living creatures. If you want to present a living creature, like your dog, inu, you would say, inu, inu wa, inu wa imas. And imas is when you present a living thing to someone else. So, imasen. I don't even know if imasen is real. Inu wa imasen. No dogs. Right. There are no dogs. See? Inu wa imasen. That is, that is right. It is real. It is real. Good. Good. I des. I des. I des. Okay, next, next sentence. Okay. Sing wa nani. So now we're gonna get to something that's basically this is where things start to get a little bit difficult. Okay? Let's talk about verbs. <laughs> In Japanese, there are, there are two types of verbs there are ru verbs, and then there are u verbs. Okay? We'll start with ru verbs because ru verbs are very, very easy because they are consistent. I'm going to save the whiteboard shenanigans here and I'm just gonna go to. Um, the, I'm gonna use the power of technology to display what I'm talking about next to me. What? Okay, that was embarrassing. Alright, so let's, 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 let's look at some common ru verbs that you'll see, okay?、Uh, we have taberu,、uh, okiru, and、uh, miru, okay? So, what do all of these three things mean? Have in common. That's right. There's a ru at the end. Wow. o m o s u r o i So when you look up a verb in the Japanese dictionary, you're going to get what is its dictionary form. So you're going, if you look up a verb in the dictionary, you're going to get the, the, the root word, which is the kanji and maybe some other hiragana or the all hiragana, right? Let's just not worry about that. And then you're going to get your, your、uh, thing at the back, which is going to tell you whether or not it's a ru verb or an u verb. So, in the case of ru verbs, you can't just say、uh, ringo ga taberu because that doesn't sound right and that's not proper. You have to put something at the end of the sentence to let you know that the action is being performed because, depending on what you say after that, will indicate if it's present tense or past tense. I'm starting with ru verbs because ru verbs are very easy. All you have to do with ru verbs is chop off that ru at the end and then just put mas. That's it. It's so easy. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so, with that said, let's talk about u verbs. Oh, Kami sama taskete kurasai. I might need some help with this one. <coughs> Sebra. Yes? I. <laughs> Um, so, I'm making a video of me talking, explaining all of the Japanese stuff that I've learned、mm. um, to help me review. But、um, the thing that I seem to have messed up very badly is u verbs, specifically、mm. the u the u kimas stuff. What? Right, exactly. I need you to help me explain this because I'm looking at the, at the Genki One stuff and I can't make heads or tails of it. <clears throat> okay, so you know how verbs have like a plain form and then they transform depending on the situation? No. But I saw in the textbook 
there was um like if it's a if it has ku it's kimas if it's ru it's rimas yeah does your textbook say anything about the word classes uh, so <clears throat> What's your, what are you wondering about? I'm wondering, yeah, so like we have kiku, kikumas, iku, ikimas, kaeru, kaerimas, yomu, yomimas. Is, yes. When you, when you have an u verb, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Is, is there like one sound that you replace that, that, that last part with, depending on what it is? So like, 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 yom, nomu and yomu. Is it always going to be, when you have that mu there, is it always going to be mi, mas? Um, <clears throat> well, okay. So you know how there's te form? Uh, we're just learning that. Is it, okay. is it going to be, what I'm asking is, when I see the M sound, I'm always, it's always going to be mi, mas. Is it going to be like that for, for depending on what the verb ends with? Typically, oo or oo verbs will you you keep the consonant but you change the vowel. Wait, say that last part again. If it's an oo verb, so there's the kanji and then there's a hiragana. Right. The consonant sound in the hiragana will never change unless it's te form. But if it's a re one, so the consonant sound's gonna stay, but we're gonna make that. But the the oo sound's gonna become an e. So mu mi. Su, si, right? Yes. Yes! Okay, that's what I thought, but I, I wasn't sure. Thank you for your help, Sabra. Yeah, I'm yeah. here to help anytime, especially Appreciate in it. Japanese. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, bud. <laughs> All right, you have a good night. I'll talk to you later. All right, you too. All right, see you, bud. Bye. Okay, finals are finally done, which means I can finally get back to finishing this video, which I started. Um, very excited about that. I've had some time to sit down with the book and think about how I want to explain the rest of these concepts to myself. And um, I figured the thing that we should start with first, before progressing any further, is um, sentence order or word order. A lot of people who don't speak other languages think that it's just a matter of learning vocabulary differently and just saying things in the same order that you say you speak with your native tongue. And it's not like that for other languages because many different languages have different sentence orders. So for example, English is a subject verb object language, meaning we, we when we start, we start with the subject and then we have the verb, which is the action that we're doing, and then the object. So I ran to the store, right? But Japanese is different. Japanese is a subject object verb language. So if we were to take the sentence, I ran to the store, and say it in Japanese, if we were to translate it literally, we'd say, I store ran. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, because there's a lot more to it, because where do you put time? Where do you put places? Where do you put objects? Where do you put goals? Where do you do that? How do you do that? What do you even do? So we're going to uh, talk about that. So with that said, let's talk about word order. Okay, we're bringing back the, the whiteboard shenanigans for this. Um, Actually, we're not. We're just gonna stick to using the power of technology, so I'm gonna bring my mic down. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the sentence order for a bit more of a, a complex sentence. Let's say, I will study Japanese at the library today. How would we go about saying that? The two orders that Genki one or Genki Ichi has given me is topic, time, place, object, verb. And then the other one is topic, frequency, time, goal, and verb. So if we were to translate this sentence into Japanese, um, I will study Japanese at the library, in the library today. The topic, watashi, mi, time, kyo, today. The place, toshokan, library. Object, nihongo. And verb, benkyo, shimasu. Shimasu meaning I will do in the present time. Not shimashita, because shimashita is the past tense
conjugation for uh, verbs. And I'll just touch briefly on some of the particles here because that's a little bit important to remember. Um, so whenever you address what the topic of a sentence is in Japanese, um, you have to put a, you have to put wa after it, which isn't wa in hiragana, it's ha in hiragana. But in this situation, when you pronounce, when you put it as after a, after a subject, it's wa. So don't, don't get that confused. And then um, time and place. So in the case of this sentence here, we have time and place together, no particles in between. Kyo wa toshokan. And then at the end, we have de. You put de after the, the place that is the goal of the action, your destination. Yeah, like your destination, right? Nihongo o, that o particle at the end, that is your object. So after you stated what your object is, you put o at the end, and then finally you go to the verb, which is your, which is what we covered earlier with the ru and u verbs. So let's talk about the second sentence order, which goes topic, frequency, time, goal, and verb. The example sentence that Genki Ichi gives us is, I often go back home around seven. So let's break this down. Topic, watashi ni yoku. Yoku in the frequency spot is often. Time, time is shichiji goro. So let me break this down a little bit more. Shichiji is seven, like the literal translation is seven times. So that G, this G here, that's, that's, like, that's like when you see that and after a, a number, that's like an hour. And then this goro at the end here, this shichiji goro, that goro there, you put that after your time and that's to say often or usually, right? Like, so you have the yoku, which is the often, and then the goro at the end, that goro is like, uh, like you put that at the end of the time to say like around this time or something like that. It, there's no like direct translation for that goro at the end. It's just kind, that's just kind of how it's written, or at least that's how I understand it. So uchi, uchi, so this uchi at the end, the, the, they didn't give us the thing, but uchi is house or home. He, he is another way to say de or ni. It's like your, it's your place. It's your goal of movement, your destination, where you're heading to. And then finally, we have kaerimasu, which is return. Yeah. So watashi wa yoku shijiji goru uchi e. Wait. Oh yeah. Watashi wa yoku. Watashi wa yoku shijiji goru uchi e kaerimasu. Those are sentences and a very, 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 very brief a very brief rundown of some particles when speaking sentences. Um, so yeah, on to the next section. Okay, so now let's talk about extending an invitation to your friends because you're gonna make friends when you learn a new language I hope so we'll start with um, the ones that I know so let's start with uh, this one here this one is masenka masen you may so you may remember masen from before that masen is the uh, is like a, a, a past tense negative verb um, and then we remember ka from deska which is the, the indication of a question. So for reasons I don't quite know, um, if you put masen ka, it is a um, extension to extend an invitation. It should be noted that this is, that its affirmative counterpart, maska, cannot be used thus. So for reasons that I can't quite exactly comprehend, masenka is um, used at the end of a sentence to extend an invitation. So for example, you have hiro gohan o tabimasen ka? Um, hiro, like midday, gohan. So hiro gohan, that gohan is meal, right? O, what's o? O is your, um, your goal, your, your object, right? Tabe and masenka, invitation. So, if we were to translate this back, it would be, do you want to get lunch? Do you want to get lunch? How would you feel about getting lunch with me? The the translation that Genki Ichi goes is, what do you say to having lunch with me? So, think about it like that. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about masho and mashoka. So, according to Genki Ichi, uh, take a long form of a verb and replace it with, with masho or mashoka, and you will get the Japanese expression for let's, which can be used to suggest a plan of action. So, you could say like, ishoni toshokan de benkyo shimasho. Ishoni 
together. Toshokan, the library. De, place. Benkyo, study. Shimashio, let's. So together, it's let's study at the library together. Isho ni toshokan de, benkyo shimashio. Got it? Okay. But then we can also use it as like an invitation, like shall we or let's go do that, right? Or it, the thing says shall we, so I won't I won't deviate from that. But anyway, you can say kisa tende kohi o nomi ka, and that is shall we drink coffee at the coffee shop? Masho is let's masho ka shall we together or just shall we? um you know. The thing about Japanese is some things do directly translate, but it, you kind of have to, you kind of have to like feel your way through some sentences, or at least that's how I feel about it when I talk with people. It's not going to be like black and white translation because particles are, particles are a little bit uh, tricky. Particles don't always translate, uh, you know, sentence order means that you kind of have to think about things a little bit differently. When it clicks, it clicks and you'll understand it, but you just, in a way that you really can't describe it. Okay. Um, I think. I think that's everything. Let me just take another sweep here. So I found here at the end that mashoka, um, in less than five we learned that mashoka, meaning let's, uh, mashoka is also used in the sense of let me do, uh, in offering assistance. Yeah, so it's to incentivize an invitation, but you can also use it as a way of saying allow me, or let me please do that, or I'll do that. Then I think, yeah, I think we're done with invitations in the mashoka. For all time's sake. I don't know what you mean, Miss Elton. Play it, Sam. So, um, let's say there's a situation and you're trying to provide an explanation. Um, lucky for you, Japanese has got something for that because. I would certainly hope so. According to Genki Ichi, a sentence that ends in kara, because, explains the reason or the cause of the situation, a proposal, and so forth. So the example sentence here is, Ashita testo ga arimasu kara, because we will have an exam tomorrow. So you say like kara after the reasoning behind why something happened. Um, however, according to my sensei, uh, putting the kata at the end is not very common in natural speak, but actually what you should do is you should flip it around, she said, so you should put the because part at the start and then the situation at the end. So the way to think about this in English, or in a way that you can comprehend because you're an English speaker, I'm assuming if you're watching this video, is because of kata, situation, instead of situation, because kata if that makes any sense. So you would say, Ashita testo ga arimasu kara watashi wa konban benkyou shimasu. Because I have a test tomorrow, I will be studying tonight. That's it. I mean, that's that's pretty freaking easy. But then let's also talk about um, a proposal because you can also use it as a proposal. So the example here is, let's go by bus because taxis are expensive. So, taxi wa katai desu kara basu norimashou. Because taxis are expensive, Let's take the bus. But you can use them, you can flop them either which way. I wouldn't think too much about them. I prefer saying kara at the first, the kara part first, and then the reasoning at the end, because that's what my sensei told me is more common. So I don't want to sound like a robot. But it's just important to remember that kara is the proposal or the reasoning or the because part. So whenever you have a reasoning or a proposal, like I'm making this proposal kara, uh, this is because of this kara, because kara situation, etc, 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 etc. Bra, 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 bra. Oh, I'm sorry, what's that? You thought we were done with verbs? Hell no, son! That's gonna be weird to edit. <laughs> So you may mention from earlier in the video, my good friend Sabra mentioning uh, te forms of verbs and me breaking. So now we're going to talk about te forms. Um, I'm going to sit here and try and explain them as best I can. <coughs> uh, te forms are a very important part of Japanese grammar. It's actually funny, I wasn't going to include te forms in the video at all. I was just going to leave that part out. 
that would have been like shooting myself in the foot. In this lesson, we will learn among their various forms to use them in making a request, giving and asking for permission, stating that something is forbidden, and forming sentences that describe two events or activities. I don't remember any of this, so I have to like reteach myself. The conjugation paradigm for te forms is complex as we need to learn separate rules for ru and u and irregular verbs. Furthermore, the u verbs are divided into five sub rules. Oh great. First with ru verbs. Uh, the rule is very simple. Take ru off and add te. Okay, just like normal ru verbs. That's easy. Stop it! <laughs> that was so aggressive! Let me try that again. <laughs> Anime noises. U verbs with a final syllable of mu, pu, and ne become nde. Okay, so if I have yomu, it's yonde. Asobu, asonde. Shine, shinde. <laughs> Why did they use that as an example? <laughs> shinde, kudasai. <laughs> U verbs with the final of ku are ite, so kaku, kaite. Um, there's also an important exception to this class, which is iku, ite. Okay, I'll, I'll film myself saying that and then put a bunch of fancy graphics over me so that I'm constantly editing that part over and over again. So, iku, ite. I don't know what I'm gonna do there, but it's gonna be interesting, I'm sure. Uvers with a gu, like oyogu. I don't know what oyogu is. What's oyogu? Oh, swim. Oyogu becomes oyoite. <laughs> Seems pretty simple enough, right? But we have a regular verbs like suru and kuru. So now we have to talk about what we do with this te, because the te is it's kind of important, apparently. So the first one that Genki Ichi gives me is te kudasai, which I know te kudasai is kudasai is please. So there's two types of pleases in Japanese. There's like onegai shimas, which is like uh, like yoroshiku onegai shimas. Kudasai is like I'll order this please, or I'll have this please, like a request kind of thing, right? You say it at a restaurant, like or choto matte kudasai, choto matte kudasai. One moment, please. Oh yeah, that's a good example. So when saying that something is allowed or you may or like it's okay to do something, you say temo ides. So te the the te part, right? The mo ides. So this so remember this te here, this is like a placeholder for the te from the verb, right? I can't I don't know where I'm pointing. I don't know where all the graphics are gonna be. Yo yonde. But you wouldn't say yonde te, you just say yonde moimas. Te wa ikemasen, which is the opposite of te mo i desu. Te wa ikemasen is don't, it's not allowed. It's not allowed at all. Okay, and finally, you can use a te form if you want to combine two or more verbs as in describing a sequence of events. You may have seen in my title cards for each of the lessons, I have the one thing and to, and then the other thing. To is used as a connection or an and for nouns. So te or the te form of a verb is used to be the and for two verbs. So you use to for nouns and te for verbs. And yeah, that's te forms. That's Japanese 101 in a nutshell. It's done. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say, now that I've finally finished this video, first of all, thank you so much for watching it. This is, when I'm done with this, it's probably gonna be maybe like 30 minutes long. It's gonna be probably the longest video I've ever made in my entire life. Um, and uh, I'm really proud of it. Yeah, all that stuff. Um, but I also wanted to say um, a very special thank you to all of the amazing people who have helped me so far in the 10 months that I've been studying the Nihongo. Whether it be my friends on Hello Talk, you guys absolutely rock. Thank you so much for talking with me and giving me the opportunity to practice. Um, uh, my, any of my senseis, thank you so much. All my friends and my family for their support. And um, the awesome people on Discord who've been helping me out. It's just, it's been such a wild ride the last 10 months. And I've been having so much fun learning Japanese and I fully plan on continuing in the future and working just as hard. 
Um, so, with that said, I'm going to finish this video, I'm going to upload it to the internet, and then I'm, I'm going to have a beer or something. I don't know. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys later.